now. I can hear and you. Can see you. See you now? Yes, we did it. So sorry about that. Amazing. So sorry. No worries. How have you been and which part of the world are you in? I'm in London right now and I'm coming to India on Monday. Yay! I hope I, I, hope I get to see you. I know you're traveling as well. And congratulations on Patan. It's been so amazing to watch. Congratulations. Thank you. Yes, it has been incredible. Uh, I think just to be able to bring so much joy into people's lives um, and the cinemas are back. So yeah, it just feels, it feels amazing. I feel like you've brought back theater. Like I feel like this movie has brought back, like I haven't even internationally, just so you know, LA, London, New York, like the, the energy that this movie has brought back has I been unbelievable. I can feel it. I can feel it in my bones. I can feel I it. Love I love it. I love it. Congra you deserve all of it. Congratulations. I'm so happy for you and so proud of you. Thank you. Thank you. But, 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 <laughs> this is about you and your new baby. <laughs> um, I don't know if I'm allowed to say to people, but I'm the lucky one. Um, I got my hands on a copy. And um, so, Jay, because this says eight rules of love, I thought I'm going to try and stick to asking you eight oh, questions love, about perfect. love and relationships. But because you and I can go on talking, I don't know if I'll stick to eight, but I'm going to try. I love it. Um, but I'm going to start by asking... And you know, I'm a really curious person, Jay. I'm always, you know, picking your brains. What, according to you, is love? I love that. That's a great question. And again, before we dive in, I want to say thank you to you for doing this. Thank you so much. You have such a busy schedule and I appreciate Not you so much. All right. So I define love as three things. Love is when you like someone's personality, when you respect their values and how they live them, and when you are committed to helping them achieve their goals. And then when they feel those three things back. So I try not to define love as this intangible, ethereal, magical thing, because yeah. we've all looked for that and we haven't been happy. And when you look at love in this way, you realize, wow, okay, can I, I can actually check that. I had a friend who, someone asked me the other day, they were getting married. They said, Jay, how do I know if I should get married? And I said, well, do you like their personality? Do you respect their values? Do you even know what they are? Mm -hmm. And do you want to help them get to their goals? Do you know what their goals are? I think that's so helpful because I think most of us growing up, um, and I think the movies and music have a, have a huge role to play in that, where I think we're constantly going after that, that crazy, dizzy feeling. And when, when that feeling subsides or when you don't find that feeling is when you start feeling disappointed, like you said. Um, so that kind of segues into my next question, which was, I was going to ask you whether the book talks about romantic relationships only, or does it talk about relationships or like different kinds of relationships that we come across in our so, lives? So the book is centered around romantic relationships as an opportunity to talk about other types of relationships. So I think a lot of the insights in the book, you could apply to friendships, you could apply to family, you can apply to parenting. And I also think a lot of it applies to loving the world, loving the environment, loving the universe, loving your society, loving your community. And so I purposely wrote the book in a way that it's at the heart of romantic relationships, but people can use it and expand it out as well. So I hope that whether you're single and you're looking for love, whether you're married and you want to find the spark again or improve your relationship, or whether you just got broken up with or divorced or are going through a really tough time, the book's designed for everyone. It's not limited to just one area of life. Yeah, it, felt, it feels really inclusive oh, in a way okay. as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and how do you feel love has evolved over generations? That's such a great question. That's, <laughs> I I, no, one's asked, no one's asked me that I've yet. Done a lot of homework, Jay. Like, I know, I, I believe love it. talking to you, so I actually sat down and I have a You're the sweetest. Questions. You're the sweetest. <laughs> I appreciate you so much. Uh, you're the kindest person. Uh, I think love has changed. It's really interesting. If you look at some of the research, just over 25 years ago, everyone used to, majority would find their partner who lived within five mile radius from where they grew up. Wow. So people 
people were more likely to just bump into someone. They were more likely to get introduced to their families. They were likely to just meet someone in their area. Today, people are getting married to people from different parts of the world. People are getting married to people from different cultures, different backgrounds. They speak different languages. So I think that love has become a lot more multicultural and multifaceted. I think another thing that's changed is massively gender roles. I think there were these previous gender roles that people felt they had to live up to in relationships. And I think today we're seeing that being completely taken away, which is brilliant because you're seeing so many families where the gender roles are completely switched. Uh, sometimes women are the breadwinners in a family. Sometimes uh, men want to stay at home and take care of the kids. And, yeah. Or there's a mix. Both people are working and both people are sharing the responsibilities of the kids. And I think that that's a really special thing that we're getting to live at a time when opportunities are open and having the relationship you want is open. I think in some of the challenging ways to raise, those are the good things, some of the challenging ways is that before a couple was surrounded by their family to help with parenting, to help with the young ones in the family. And so people grew up with lots of aunties and uncles and their grandma and this wider family. And we've always had this phrase that it takes a village to raise a child. And we've lost the village. I think people live more isolated. There's more pressure on parents. There's more pressure on two people having to do everything for a child. And so that's become something that's been more difficult. Uh, and another challenge that I think we face also is now we expect more from our partners than ever before. True. Before, if you had a problem, you'd have your sister, you'd go to your mom, you'd go to your dad, you'd go to your friends. But now we ask our partner about everything and our partner has to be a business partner. They have to be our life coach. They have to be our Instagram husband or wife. They have to be, they have to play every role in our lives. Right. And it can be quite overwhelming to be everything. That's what I found interesting is um, you talk about sort of the support system, but as Indians were familiar with that because in India, culturally, we, we come from this joint family system, but but what you're saying, is that true to Western culture as well? I, I would say that there's definitely a shift in that, that there is definitely from people that I know, friends that I have that grew up in the West, definitely feel like family was far more involved mm -hmm. uh, than, than they are now. And I think people are seeing that feeling of being isolated, especially as people move to different cities and move right. to different countries. And, you know, even if you look at me and Radhi, like, we've moved to LA, which is 10 hours away from London, even though I'm in London right now. And I think about that. I often, we often talk about this, like when we have kids, like how, how will they see family often? Right. Like it will just be me and you. And then obviously we have good friends, but it's still different. Right. And so I think that's a very big discussion and conversation, even as an Indian who grew up and Radhi grew up with all of her family, like family. five minutes away. And now we're thinking about, when we're thinking about having kids, we're like, oh my gosh, but our kids aren't going to have that. So how are we going to navigate that? So even as an Indian living in LA, I'm having the same conversation. How much do you think the movies have, have played a role? We spoke about how love uh, and relationships have evolved over a period of time. Um, you know, we've spoken about how culturally... Uh, and, you know, our dependency on our partners are changing, evolving. How much do you think, um, you know, the movies, entertainment, music, how much of that has influenced <laughs> where we are today, but also our original idea of love? Yeah, so, you know, I'm a big fan of Bollywood and I'm a big <laughs> fan of your movies, too, obviously. Uh, and I think you've actually done quite a few movies that have a, have a real undertone to relationships. Uh, you know, I, I think you've played so many roles that have uh, a connected, like relevant way of portraying love. So I don't think that all movies are portraying love in an unhealthy way. At the same time, I'm a, I'm a, I was born in 87 and the 90s were full of like, <laughs> the, the, the like really uh, intense romantic movies where love was just this special thing. And I grew up as a huge Shah Rukh Khan fan and, you know, you, you watch Shah Rukh's movies and yeah. you want to fall in love in that way. Yeah, and yeah you want to fall in love with Raj and Raj. Yeah, exactly. And, yeah. <laughs> and you want to be Raj. As a guy, you want to be Raj. And, oh, that's and I a lot think, of pressure. Yeah, a lot of pressure. And I, and I think that 
I often try to be Raj and failed, or <laughs> or you try, right, or you or you try and find someone uh, perfect uh, that that also doesn't work. And so what I found was that I think the ideologies that I think unhealthy ones I'd like to point out, not movies, but the ideologies. I think a lot of ideologies were the damsel in distress, that the woman is lost, she's confused, she's stuck, and then a man is gonna come and save her. I think that ideology is an unhealthy ideology that exists in some movies, that you have a woman who's completely lost. And the other idea is that you're broken and someone is gonna fix you. So you see a lot of movies where one of the characters, it could be a man, it could be a woman, they're broken and that they're lost and stuck. But as soon as they met a woman that changed their life, or as soon as they meet someone, it changes their life. And I think those ideologies is what we need to extract. Movies are entertaining. I love movies. I get so much from them. And I don't think we should ever stop making entertaining, amazing movies. Yeah. But I think as a viewer, we have to discern and we have to know the difference between this is fun, it's entertaining, it's amazing. Fun. But then in my real life, I shouldn't take this ideology and think I'm broken or a man is going to come and save me or someone's going to come and save me. Or that there's going to be violins playing when I have a proposal or <laughs> there's, <laughs> that there's going to be this beautiful, you know, outfit change in the middle of my wedding or whatever it may be. <laughs> yeah, I think like that idea of perfection, right? Like sometimes the guy's proposing to you and he drops the ring. or I don't know, like, uh, I think just the idea of perfection that, you know, that we were talking about, there's, I think, we need to manage expectations. And like you said, I think answer the three most important questions. Um, how have you and Radhi sort of, you know, your relationship and both of you are busy and both of you are traveling and uh, how have you managed your relationship? Yeah, it's, it's been hard, right? It's challenging. It's not, it's not easy when you live busy separate lives with work or you live across uh, countries because Radhi wants to be in family with London sometimes, I'm in LA, we've talked about that many times. Yeah. And I find that that's why it takes a lot of communication around a few things. The first thing is we need to communicate around what we're going through right now. So often I'll say to Radhi, hey, you know what? For the next month, I'm gonna be traveling uh, I want you to know that I love you, that I'm here for you, that I care about you. If you ever need me, I'll drop everything and be here. But I'm going to be preoccupied for the next month. I just want to make you aware. And I think often we don't communicate in a caring, compassionate way. We just do our life. Yeah. And then a month later, I'll part say that again. And, and then assume that both partners are on the same page. Exactly. Yeah, we assume that our partner just understands. They know. They'll figure it out. But we have to communicate that. I think a second thing I'd say is that we have to communicate who our partner is and how much they mean to us every day, every week. I think often we don't say, I love you in a deep way. We may just throw it around and say, oh, I love you, bye. Like, but to, to really express to our partners what we appreciate about them, what we value about them, we shouldn't forget to remind the people we love the most. Often the people we love the most, we treat the worst. And take, for granted. and take for granted and they deal with the they deal with the worst parts of us and you know they tolerate us but we don't acknowledge them and the third thing to communicate about i think is when there is a challenge when there is something that we're struggling with i think often we think oh no no i better not say it because it will start a fight or i have to suppress my feelings and i think instead of learning to argue we have to learn to healthily bring up our challenges and the way we do this is we don't say, you make me feel like this, or this is how you make me feel, or you're the problem. I think when we do use that language, we push someone away. Whereas when we say, you know, I know we're going through this. I know that we could be better. I know that we can really get somewhere, but it's going to take a lot from us. Yeah. So let's figure out what we can do. I think when we speak in we and us and not sorry, when we speak in us and we and not you and me, it creates a team rather than a feeling of, well, you're the problem. And so what I'm hearing is just, like you said, make it about us versus we're a team and we're not, it's not about you versus me and who's better and who, you know, you were right and I was wrong. Um, and both people have to work equally to, to sort of make a relationship yeah. work. And also to communicate clearly with each other. 
Yes, exactly. I think so often we're trying so hard to be right. I was saying to someone the other day, I was saying that you spend all this time chasing someone to win them over. Yeah. You spend all this time chasing them to win them over and now you want them to lose in an argument. It yeah. doesn't make any sense. Like you spent so much time trying to convince this person that I love you. I want to be with you. I want to marry you. And then now when you're arguing, you want them to lose. You want to be right. And so I think in the pursuit of trying to be right, you can push someone away. Away. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I have so many <laughs> questions for you, Jay. But I know we have to kind of keep this brief and we don't want to give away too much because you're also <laughs> going to be on tour. And we're going to talk about love and relationships and your book and, and about your book a lot more in that moment. Um, so tell me about the tour itself, yes. because that's where I'm going to be picking your brain more <laughs> than I have today. <laughs> so on the tour, I'm going to be visiting India. I'm so excited because I've never actually, and even this is the first thing really <laughs> doing it with you, which is so special for me. I'm so grateful to you. Uh, I've never come to India professionally, like since I started doing what I do. And so this is very exciting to me to come to the country that I believe has given me the spiritual essence and foundation of all my work. I mean, all I'm ever doing is quoting our literatures and our teachers and our guides from our beautiful country. And to be able to come there, to be present with my amazing community there is so special. And so I'll be on tour in India. I'll be doing a special q and a i'll be signing books i'll be sharing more messages from the book and i'm i'm tell so us, excited tell us your dates i know you're going to be here in may uh i also know you're going to be in bangalore and in mumbai yes i'm going to give uh, you the exact dates right now for everyone who's listening yes so may 2nd i'm in mumbai at the tata theater may 3rd i'm in mumbai at the tata theater may 5 i'm in hyderabad and then May 6th, I'm in Bangalore. So Amazing. there's a lot of India dates there. And I would love to see as many of you. Well, I can tell you that India is really looking forward to, to having you here. Um, I know a lot of people want to talk to you and, and listen to you. Um, and we cannot wait for you to be here oh, in, in May. Um, yeah. Is there anything else that you think we should talk about or, or we should cover? I, I just want to Otherwise, thank you. I, I, or we'll be giving away all of the books. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, I honestly just want to thank you for being my friend, for being in my life, for supporting me so wonderfully with this very important project in my life. I want, I want everyone in the world to have more happiness and joy and purpose in their relationships. I don't think we, we don't understand how deeply connected our mental health and well-being is to the quality of our relationships we don't realize that we think it's just exercising and eating the right thing and that all of that's important but if you have an argument with your partner it affects your mental health oh, in a much different way and so i just want people to live happier healthier healed marriages and relationships and so thank you for helping me in my mission. Thank you so much. Not and I can't wait to see it all. Like, I mean, I have so many more questions for you, like why this topic <laughs> and all of that. But we'll, we'll chat. We'll chat uh, we more when we meet. Thank you so thank much. You, thank, you for, thank you for choosing me to do this with you. Uh, I feel grateful. And I will see you Def very, very soon. Definitely. No one better to do it with. And, and please save this because I want to share it Absolutely. afterwards as well. So, Absolutely. Thank you, Absolutely. everyone. Thank you everyone to tuned in i love all your comments and uh, uh i really appreciate all your positivity and good energy Lots. And for anyone who wants i can see so many so venues many. venue people want to know the venues for hyderabad and bangalore so i'll uh -huh. give you two websites everyone uh, if you would like to order the book it's out it's at eight rules of love.com eight rules of thought so the title eight rules of love.com and then for the tour, go to jshettytour.com. So my name followed by tour, jshettytour.com is where you can get tour tickets. Um, but thank you, Deepika. Thank you so much. And thank you, thank everyone. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Bye, Jay. Bye, Deepika. See you bye. soon. Thank See you. you. Bye. Bye. bye.